Joining us in studio is not only an Indianapolis legend, Atlanta legend, but now hey, don't call him don't call him Bob in your intro. You yeah. know that. You know better. I, there was a glitch. I, it was the microphone. Yeah, I'm slapping shit off the Robert. Off the dish. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought it was the microphone. It was the microphone. Something happened. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, happy we're past that. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> it was a little bit of a sweat there when I saw the tweet initially, but I know this man is in too good of a mood because so much greatness is happening in his life that he has earned and deserved. Today, it was announced that he is a semifinalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame in his first year eligible. In this weekend at the home game against the Tampa Bay. Buccaneers, he will be honored to go into the ring of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, never been more deserving, Robert Mathis. Yeah! What's up, dude? Hey, what's going on? So the Bob, I, I don't know what Patrick. happened. Yeah, they, well, <laughs> all right, listen, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you can call me anything you would like uh, forever, but I honestly believe in the intro, I didn't get a chance to say it. Congratulations, man. This is fucking awesome. I mean, this is very, very cool. So, Hall of Fame uh, announcement today, semifinal first year. That means you're fucking going in. Okay, your first year, you go semifinals, you're going in. I understand you're going to have to not be able to have that mindset, yeah. and you're not in until you're in. But I think most people with a brain will say, you're going in. Then you're going in the Ring of Honor this weekend, which is massive for our team, our organization. I think everybody knows how hard it is to get in. There is a line of people that yeah. need to get in there. And I think you, representing the Colts there forever, and going into the the Hall of Fame is one of the coolest things I've ever uh, witnessed personally a little small piece of it from zone six to the Hall of Fame and the Ring of Honor dude congrats dude. yeah <laughs> fucking congrats man it's awesome hey, that was a hell of an intro man that, that that's a big onion appeal right there so uh a lot of guys deserving uh with the guys that we played with during that decade it's just we won the most games in that in that span in history may have been upended by those boston guys by now but oh uh, yeah i agree hey, whatever yeah they whatever. stink up there yeah don't yeah, worry it's, it's well, a lot of guys it's just i'm just so honored and uh in a good place man so what have you been doing a lot of reflection i assume whenever things like this happen and, and people say like i'm humbled by something and i never really understood what that meant but then when you're bestowed an honor the humbleness comes from like oh like do I deserve this? Like, oh, I got to work for this? And you start, like, reflecting, I think. I assume you've done a lot of reflection and looking back on how you got to this point over the last few weeks. That has had been, had to been very fulfilling, I'd assume, and when you look back on the journey that's been. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, like, uh, reflection, prayer, things like that, spending time with, with the Father up top. And uh, once you retire, that's when you can really just think about this stuff. But when you're playing, you don't think about it. You're just trying to uh, do what it takes to win games, do what it takes to earn your, your seat at the table, and uh, and just be among these greats, uh, Peyton, Marv, Reggie, Dwight, uh, Jeff Saturdays, and just, just do your part to win games. And uh, when it's all said and done and the smoke clears, all right, this is what we have. <laughs> yeah. So. You were covering kicks. Yeah. You were you were you were a kickoff. You were covering. You were on the kickoff team the first couple of years. You were a special teamer, and then Bill Polian's vision of you and Freeney coming off the edge just kind of came full toward. Was there ever a doubt? No, or is this always the journey? Well, if it whatever the plan was, they didn't tell me till later on. So you had to, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to get what you need to get. And so I needed I needed a spot on on a, a roster on the team. So that's what I had to do. So I was willing to do it and. They let me. They messed up. They they messed up and let me rush the quarterback. So it was all said and done. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. Yeah. Robert, who do you like watching now in the league that that rushes the the, the quarterback? Like it's an outside rusher, whether it's outside back or DN. Like who's your fa who well, your fan? Well, my favorite is uh is Von Miller, uh and Chandler Jones inside. Of course, Aaron Donald, Chris Jones, and DeForest Buckner. But my my special guy is Max Crosby, number ninety eight mm. for the Raiders. Okay. This he he is not getting any any kind of burn right now and he is a dog coming off the edge so i think people kind of need to shine a little light on him because he he's 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 a man over there when you were covering kicks before you became a pass rusher and a qb hater and everything mm -hmm. like that you uh, turned into the strip sack wasn't really you know a stat i don't know if it's even a stat currently is it i appreciate that alley -oop. uh Sack fumbles are still not an official stat uh roger goodell i think we need to address this uh <laughs> Whatever, address it. <laughs> <laughs> that should yeah, be. Don't you think it should yeah. be a two for there? You you get a sack, I think, right? Yeah, it's it, honestly it's more devastating than the interception because it's instant field position, and and you're hitting the the, the franchise, the engine to every every NFL team you, is the quarterback, and you're hitting and you're 
putting him on the ground. So was that full focus for you? It was like I'm a, obviously you want to secure the tackle, yada yada yada. But you were a specialist at getting the the tomahawk. Was uh, I mean that was a nightmare for quarterback. We actually heard from coaches that joined the staff later that said our quarterbacks weren't able to sleep whenever they were thinking about playing you guys <laughs> because Dwight Freeney was going to embarrass the tackle and Robert Mathis was going to do the same and get the ball out at all the time. Mm-hmm. So it changed the game completely for quarterbacks. Was that something you focused on? And when did you know that was going to be your thing? Well, ironically, I folk, I, I did that in high school. I was watching a lot of Derek Thomas tape, uh, Kansas City Chiefs edge guy. He he came with it and called it a tomahawk strip. Secure the tackle and then separate the ball from the quarterback. And so I did that in high school, uh, then got to college. But then I got to the NFL and John Tierlink just kind of perfected it. Uh, we did a lot of drills, and uh, Dwight and myself, we we did that every day in practice. So <clears throat> getting after the quarterback was one thing, but separating him from the ball, that's how you got the whole sack. Instead of Dwight stealing uh, damn sacks from you and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, you get, the, you get the ball out, you get the whole sack, and you get an extra stat, which is a forced fumble. Well, forced fumbles, that is an official stat. But sack fumbles is not. Correct that, Roger Goodell, please, and thank you. <laughs> yeah, make that happen over there on Park Ave. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah. Don't, I don't know if like casual fans are aware. If you knock the ball to the quarterback's hands, it's a sack, it counts as a sack. You don't have to get him on the ground. All you got to do is get the ball out. That's a sack, and you get a chance to pick it up and score, too. Absolutely. Um, OC, you and Ura and, and myself, we used to joke about that. Like, man, and John Abraham, why the hell you need to get dirty when you can just slap the ball out? <laughs> So you get a sack, force fumble, and you and you get to stay clean. You know. Uh, now you're giving back to the game and right. the community in a massive way with uh, the Gridiron Gang, and I am, you know, like I don't know how the way to proud. I, I don't know, but like it's awesome to watch because you and Dan Mer- are are giving back on the field training and mm-hmm. the way it's set up to give back to people mm-hmm. who uh, it, it may be in neighborhoods that would never be able to afford this type of specific training Mm -hmm. what are you teaching what is different about the gridiron gang and uh why why have you committed so much of your time it is like a full-time thing it's awesome Mm -hmm. that you've done this well it's not just a just football training on field and uh throughout the gridiron gang foundation uh it's a it's a all-inclusive one-stop shop so it's football training of course uh, every sport, so male and female. So whatever sport that you play, we have uh, speed and agility, weights, uh, diet. Also, we offer social media training. Oh, here we go. Which would get a lot, which gets a lot of young athletes in trouble as they have aspirations to be pros. One bad tweet and it's and it's on you until you, you know forever. Uh, etiquette training, how to sit at the dinner table, uh, financial literacy. Here we Think, go. The mm-hmm. things that uh, so it's that, a life. This is a life. Yes, this is life. This is a mentorship. Big brother, big sister, uncle, uncle. I mean, uncle, aunt, OGs. When you when somebody call you an uncle, OG, or coach, that comes with a responsibility, and uh, we take that seriously. So we're trying to teach these uh, the children, the youth at a young age, how to function as adults because playing uh, playing with uh, teammates and, and people right now. I mean, it's leisure, but it's going to turn into networking later. So we just teach you how to operate in that vein. It's smart because there's, you know, there's people that think like that throughout mm-hmm. their entire life and they normally be successful. But to get to that point, you have to experience certain failures normally. And then yeah. now that you're kind of smartening them and sharing game with them at this young age, right. hopefully it'll give a lot more people a lot more opportunity. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, I also don't want to say he's not, he's not, he, don't turn my mic off, but Pat, is my main supporter, uh, a, a big contributor and a guy that just, he continues to just gives us a lot of motivation and, and just support. So I want to, I want to say thank you to you no, no, for, no, for helping us and just being, just being in our corner and backing us in whatever shape, fashion or form. And, uh, you're a real one, man. So I appreciate you, bro. man. I appreciate you. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, um, we should have muted that, okay? We don't need people. I'm a stooge, you hear me? I'm just dumb stooge who speaks in a microphone. But I think whenever I see something awesome and I see somebody like, you were very nice to me in the locker room immediately upon joining. And I think from learning from other people, that's not necessarily normal, that that's the way it goes. But uh, you have always been an incredible teammate. And that's what I wanted to ask about with the Gridiron Gang. It feels like you are sharing what you were as a teammate, basically, as the OG in the locker room with a younger generation and giving back. Like, that's a that's a brilliant concept. And I think that's why I'm so, you know, thankful and excited about it all. But thank you for those kind words. It means a lot coming so, from you, obviously. Well, with us, it's all, 
our instructors are always are former NFL uh, professional level guys. And so the thing you miss about the game is the locker room. I don't miss the, the, the bumps, the bruises, hitting people, getting hit. You miss the people, the relationships that you form. And so uh, the way for us to wean ourselves off the game and, and, and have therapy, per se, was being around it and teaching it. And so to have these children and just pouring into them and they're just taking whatever you say, empty vessels and just uh, applying it, that's, that's a, that's a, that is a huge uh, reward for us. That's awesome. Go ahead, AJ. Mm -hmm. Robert, I would imagine, like you said, having former NFL players <clears throat> coach and teach and mentor that also has to help those players and that transition from football to life like yeah. that's got to feel great as well not only helping these kids but yeah it's, you're helping a lot of your peers absolutely uh i know with me when i retired i was like what the f what what hey what, what, frank what said this two days ago yeah. frank gore said this two days ago uh -huh. and then aaron said it uh mm -hmm. yesterday and yeah. then now you're saying it and aj and i retiring is it's not an real. easy thing it's it? real man because oh, well coach i i tried coaching that it wasn't for me Time, and it, time, or time, and just it was time, time. <laughs> time. <Yeah. laughs> That's a different time. level of yeah. And yeah. so my thing was, I would never. I made a promise to myself. Look, I will not lie to the to those coming behind me, whether it's a young player, because you know a lot of them call me OG. Yeah, you so are. I'm gonna give them game, and I'm not gonna lie to them, but I'm not gonna just tell them some 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 BS. You They're enjoy it, though, obviously. I, I, I enjoy it, and I love giving them truth. I love giving them game. Uh, I have a lot of uh, student athletes, man, and they just they just soak up every word that you say to them. And just as long as you can keep them on the right path and just keep the, the distractions at a minimum, they're going to be set up for success for a long time. How about the uh, immediate credibility to AJ when these kids show up and it's fucking Robert Mathis? They're actually doing the drill. Like, yeah. actually, yeah. I, I, I want to make sure people know this, that don't fall like – Robert is actually running hands with these high schoolers, like a hundred of them. Like, like actually every single day. It is in, like, it is awesome. I'm lucky. Uh, it's cardio. It's cardio for me. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm about I to got, say. I got to get me some trainers. So, any interns out there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any nutrition? Get you know, no, Mitt would not be. Well, mm -hmm. McMahon's son, uh, Emmett, here has really transformed into mm -hmm. something awesome. Yeah. Coach, but, you're holding you know, your breath, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Go ahead, Ty. Robert, when you look at, we talk about the pass interference, or not pass interference, the roughing the passer penalties quite a bit lately. When you oh, look at this okay. kind of stuff, like, <laughs> Obviously, you know. Hey, you, don't land on them, Robert. Jesus. Like, is there an, is there anything these guys can do? I mean, you look at it and they slow it down. It's like okay, it is helmet to helmet. But what they're asking these guys to do is virtually impossible, and these these calls are affecting the outcomes of games. Yeah, I, uh, the only thing that they have not requested is that we paint their fingernails for them. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. So you know, it is what it is. I said what I said. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's 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 very tough to play defense now because they're taking the aggression out of it. Nobody's there is. You can't really say there's an aggressor on defense now because uh with defenseless you got to let him catch the ball you got to you got to strike zone on the quarterback he has five bodyguards that get paid millions of dollars and two additional bodyguards right behind him oh, so strike. you don't you yeah. so that you don't hit him or land on him in the wrong fashion but uh I remember Dwight got hurt trying to not hit uh San or Sanchez Mark, yeah. Mark Mark Sanchez in an AFC championship game so if you have coaches saying I want this I want a speed aggressive tenacity i want all this but you have the nfl front office saying <laughs> fine 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 yeah. fine fine <laughs> so who do you listen to and do i listen to my coach because he has my job you know that weighs in the balance or he's going to take money they're going to take money from me if i do what this coach says so it needs to be a a, a balance somewhere some it's just too much gray area so Make it defined because every year they changing and altering the, the rules or whatnot, and it, the players just don't know what's going on, so they just go for the knees. Yeah, yeah. and by the way, that's that, <laughs> I don't I don't, that's don't go for my knees. I mean, don't right. go for yeah. my knees. Yeah. Uh, Carson Palmer had that rule get changed because of the going for the oh, knees right. thing, and now there's a strike zone, but you're supposed to do it at 22 miles an hour while somebody else. It, it right. seems like. And I don't want to put myself in this because I never played in the fashion or on the in the situations you guys did. But it feels like a lot of the older players have been spouting the same exact thing. Like I don't know how you would expect us to do it. The younger players it doesn't sound like they speak up that much. Do you do you still get a chance to chat with them and how they feel about how they adapt to it? Is I it do. Uh, 
they they're very they're more, they're more vocal. They just they just talk to us, the OGs. Yeah, yeah. So in, in in that sense, we we have to be be their voice. Yes. So I'm we're, I'm their voice. I can say what I want to say. I'm retired. <laughs> I can say what I want to say. You're a Hall of but, Famer coming up too. Yeah. I mean, even, let's go. Even like when the the cornerbacks can't cut these big ass old, old offensive tackles when they pull out in the flats. Like you have to hit them up top. That is ridiculous. Yeah, you're asking. That's ridiculous. Pancake <laughs> City. Yeah. Honestly, you, are. you can't cut them low. Like. What, do, what am I supposed How to do? How about the taunting call? Hey, have you heard anything about that the taunting call? Because the, it being yeah. a point of emphasis is my problem. It, it's a rule. I get it. If it's a, if it's too much and it's a rule, cool. Point of emphasis means, hey, we want this out. Pay attention to it. A guy named Land Clark has seven of them this year, this particular ref. And that's what you get, though. You get an ego-driven ref, maybe, that can dictate an entire game, Rob. There was uh, that and that on Sports Mike on what Cassius Marsh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, man, you gotta be kidding me. Mm-hmm. He you gotta be kidding hey, me. Hey, how so. about that spinning fucking kick? Oh yeah. yeah. Did you sweet. see yeah, his that was, celebration? That was sweet. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what we said. Yeah. yeah. That was that was that was sweet. But then going over to Tom, the amount of history, you know, and Tomlin respects that. I, and now granted he was a part of the rules <coughs> committee and he said that is the picture of taunting. But Tomlin's gonna talk shit too. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. I think that's a part of the the competitive juices, but we're also just a bunch of old guys yelling in the front yard, I guess. Well, t- uh, Coach Dungey said it best. If you don't like them celebrating, don't let them score or stop them. Yeah. Amen. Michael Irvin said, you don't want us dancing. Stop us from scoring touchdowns. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then he, I think he even yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> New what, did, what do, fan, do fans pay? Okay. They, don't pay, they, they want to be entertained. Not saying everybody have to be that type of guy. I wasn't that type of guy. Pat was so. Pat, if he blow you up, he gonna let you know. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna give you all that. But everybody's not cut from the same cloth. Somebody, a lot of guys, especially those Florida, those Florida, Florida boys, boys. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, they gonna, they gonna chirp. That's how they get. That's a culture. That's, that's, by the way. that's a culture thing. So you have to understand it's deeper than just I'm just gonna talk some shit. No, that's how that's that's kind of how what it is. And it's they try yeah. to they want everybody to be Barry Sanders, which by the way, a lot of no. respect for Barry Sanders. Yeah. Lot of, the mm-hmm. fact that he was able to do everything he was able to do and just hand the ball over yeah. and still be motivated and have a chip and everything was great. I was not like that as a person mm-hmm. that before football, and I know a lot of people that aren't. Like, hey, I need to remind both me and the other person what mm-hmm. just happened, and we need to keep it going. I'll say, uh, I'll say this: if we're playing a team like. The old Houston Texans, we're up 41 to whatever. I get a sack. I'm doing my sack dance. If we're playing the Arizona Cardinals with when Bruce Arians, the first game back, he's blowing us out 41 to 10. I get a sack. I'm doing my sack dance. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just what it is. You earn the right to be in that position. Yeah. So and, play your position. And big plays aren't handed out. Uh, they no, are. They no, are. Sacks is tough. I'm. I'm do your sack dance. Do your sack, do your dance. Do your dance. Do your dance. I literally say that in uh, basically every for the brand video now. Whenever punters celebrate, do your dance. Yeah, dude. Really? Let them know about it. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. Sorry about that. Well, a, a big thing, Robert. They talk about like, oh, we got to have this taunting rule and clean it up because we don't want kids to see this and and start doing it. Are you seeing any of that with younger kids? I know I coach my kids, and yeah, they they like to talk. I don't care. I think it's cool when they get into it and they're passionate. But are you seeing that when these kids you're training are they coming in like already? So, like taunting more than maybe some kids. Hold on though, and kids. also, don't you think some of those people are just going to be like that anyways? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We have a lot of our, a lot of our student athletes. They come in uh, brash. They like to talk trash, and uh, it's your job to humble them. And uh, we mm-hmm. have I have one in particular. He's he's made a <laughs> he's made a, a huge leap. I call him Super Swag. He uh-huh. came in talking some. I mean, he was garbage, <laughs> <laughs> garbage through the drills. Cause you know I have another guy, Popeye Williams. So he was more polished. He's been working with us, but Popeye doesn't say anything. Super Swag came in. He was talking. So now he learned to stop talking and start doing. And he's he's one of my most prized uh, uh, pupils now. It, you just have to humble him in the right way. I mean you. I never like to get. I never like coaches cussing at me growing up. So I'm gonna put myself in a position to not get cussed at because if you start cussing at me, I'm gonna cuss back, and then we are gonna be cussing. It's a bigger problem, and you know, it's much so, bigger than a drill. We're no, just it's doing. about you in the uh, authority position, leading. 
They're going to follow you. They can, they can see this on TV, but they're going to follow you when it's all said and done. I said that to Ian Rappaport when the point of emphasis came out, basically. And Rappaport is, he works for the NFL, and he's an insider for the NFL. So he is a, when he's speaking, it's like, hey, this is the NFL speaking. You know, not right. as much as Tom Pelissero, right. but every conversation we have with somebody, we got to know where they're coming from, okay? Right. Ian's speaking for the NFL. And mm -hmm. his big thing was, you know, there's younger guy, the fans watching, and the NFL has a responsibility to not have that become. I'm like, well, why don't the parents tell them, hey, these guys on TV worked 18, 19, 20 years of their lives to get to this point. They just change the trajectory of their kids, their family, their community. They just change everything, and they're allowed to act like that. If you figure that out someday, you could do the Go same ahead. thing. Yep. Now, I am not a coach, though, so I don't know if I would necessarily yes, resonate, but that feels like a message that should also be talked about as opposed to the, oh, well, if they do it on TV, they're going to do it. It's like, can't you just tell them not to? And I assume that it's not as easy as that, but why is that never talked about? Well, what you just said, I like that, and I'm going to plagiarize it, so I just took a mental note of that, so I'm going to use that. Okay. So, hey, here we go. <laughs> Look at that, AJ. I'm out no, here coaching. I mean, the responsibility falls on the people in authority, so – Kids are going to be kids. They, they, they're they going to do what they're going to do. They, they go off what they see. So that said, you have to guide that, that energy and just get it going in the right direction. That hat is awesome, by the way. I just got it today from the Colts, man. Because yeah. that's Ring of Honor hat right there? Is that No. You know, Doug Melton. Shout out to Doug. Hey, uh, love the Doug. male guy. Yeah, I love he, Doug. He always get me right. Man. He get me right. So, so what do you get? you get a ring for the Ring of Honor? Or do you get a, a cape? I mean, do you get, get a jacket? Ooh. I mean, probably a cookie. I get a jacket, a nice jacket, a uh, tailor made jacket. Uh, it's pretty sweet, too. Yeah, because I've seen yeah. a couple of the other celebrations, and you see, like, uh, Peyton's got a jacket. It's it's like the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's basically the jacket is. is a is an incredible thing. Vinatieri's is. not too far behind, I don't think. Yeah, he's next. Yeah, you got to know he's next. Who's, who else? Bob, too, right? We got Bob, Dallas, uh, Tark Glenn. There's a lot. Like when I, Gary Bright. You got all these guys, man. You I was walking out of uh, Freeney's celebration last year, mm -hmm. or two years ago. I was walking out, and somebody said, uh, hey, Pat, you're, you're next, whatever. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> there is a lot. Do not even say there is a long list of legends that still have to get up there because it's it doesn't happen as often, I think, Once as a year. As good of a run that was. I don't think there's as many happenings to add to the ring of honor as there has to be. They might they might need to do twice a year. That's what I'm saying. A, it's a log jam. Yeah. Right now. It was a lot of great coach guys that that played in the two thousands. That team so, was fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I yeah. got to catch literally the tail end of it in watching that operation mm -hmm. and then kind of taking that information going forward mm -hmm. was always very fascinating, even though I was too young to be able to really say anything that mattered. <laughs> Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Max Crosby. I think he was like a third or fourth um, round pick. And in the same draft, they took Clellan Farrell, like the fourth overall pick. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you think some guys who get drafted later like completely exceed expectations versus others? who are, you know, like top you. 10 All picks. Like, like you, yeah. A lot of that is uh, some guys are just late bloomers. Like you have Jerry Hughes in Buffalo. Oh. He came, he's a first-round pick, mm -hmm. so he thrived in college. But when he got to us, he wasn't ready to take that step yet. And you had Dwight and myself there to groom him. So he saw and just learned what we did. He went to, went to Buffalo and just took off. So yeah. he was a, a late bloomer. Uh, other guys, is, is they got to be in the right system. And also the right coach. Somebody, you, some, you simply got to pull some of that stuff out. So, mm -hmm. uh, Max is a he's a dog. I, I <laughs> yeah. like I like his game. Have you ever I, met him? No, I talked to him. I talked to him uh, for the first time. I told him, "Look, man, I need to work with you. Yeah, let me let me let me work with you. You did an outside spin a few times. I like it. It's a little. It's a little. What was that? Uh, hold on. I can, what I can was refine that, thing? that. What was that fucking thing you did to Costanzo? No. Oh, what was it? What was it? it was in. Uh, We're gonna. Look, Costanzo doesn't deserve us. Okay, Costanzo doesn't deserve us. What the fake spin? It, what was it? You did a. It was like a double spin. I forget what it was. I'm yeah. watching it on film in my head, <laughs> and I can't remember what it was. You you faked. It was a fake out. It's a fake in, fake in, outside spin, duck under. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> yes. No. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the crowd think we planned that. Oh, yeah. my God. Come on, finish the move, man. Yeah. I did. I ducked under the, <laughs> I ducked under the block. Not That's exactly down. what happened in the film I saw. Jeez Louise, dude. 
guard came and picked you up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she must be a one-on-one drill. You got chipped. You got chipped. Yeah, you got chipped. <laughs> That's what happens when you're rushing with uh, Mathis and Freeney, dude. Yeah, it's hard to rush an Air Force One, man. Oh, well, this That's going to be sticky. Yeah, and they're also going to be scuffed and drenched. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're done. I mean, they are. They're done. Yeah. Hey, shout yeah. out. Shout out to the next pair. These yeah. guys had a good run. These guys had a good, good run. run. Good run. <laughs> I ice picked that thing. You see that ice pick? <laughs> that was clean. Jeez no, no, Louise, no. dude. Chip block. All right. I don't even fucking know where we go from there. <laughs> the studio, Robert Matthew. Yeah, that's you. You're talking about you. <laughs> hey, that's going to happen oh, in the very near future. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not this year, by the way. And I don't know how you're viewing it. How are you viewing it? Is this something where make or break for you emotionally? I hope not. No. Okay, good. What happens when they, if they don't? <laughs> what happens if they don't? Uh, my feelings are not hurt. I'm not sensitive. So... If, whenever my time comes, it comes. So I understand this is – you have to be voted in. Yes. So a lot of players, you just can't really just get in your feelings about that. So, so so how does it work? Have you learned about the process yet? Will they teach it? Like Chap, I think, has to pitch you, right? Mike Chappell? Mike, yeah, he has a vote, I think, for this market. And uh, they just have to vote on in the media. It's a media, more of a media-driven award. So that's why a lot of big, uh, big media like New York and Dallas – they can they can kind of push a little harder, yeah. but I, you can't really just put a lot of stock into that. Stuff. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, it's fascinating. Whenever it's not something that you can just win outright, you, it mm -hmm. has to be voted upon. And, and right. I might be wrong in this, but I think there's a difference between sport and competition. So in a sport, I think you can win outright by yourself. In a competition, the judge decides. Now, boxing judges can decide, but you can win outright. So I think it's in that thing. But I think if you, and by the way, both require incredible athleticism, both competition and sport. But I think whenever you you can't win something outright by yourself mm. and it has to be determined by other people there's always an added like yeah. you know it's you're kind of torn on it when you get it you're going to be pumped yeah but you have like thinking ahead you have no idea what's going to happen right i mean that's true that's true because you have a lot of gates involved you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> yeah i'd say yeah there's a lot of conversation <laughs> there's a lot of gates that could yeah, potentially like pop sc up scandals uh joining yeah. us now aj Hawkgate. uh this is <laughs> Fall asleep while he drives gate. The um, AJ, you all right, man? Happy to see you back. Yeah, I'm doing great. It wasn't, uh, I don't know, it wasn't ringing through my computer. Oh. Hey, that's been happening to me. I got this new phone and it hasn't been connecting. I haven't been able to connect to some people. They oh. said I'm getting an update tonight. Why do they always got to be glitchy? What the hell's going on? Especially What's this the new all ones. You should be ready to go. I just, hey, you're $45,000. Yeah. yeah. Okay. New operator it usually out. does that, though. Fucking figure it <laughs> yeah. out. Uh, Robert, I'm going to ask you about a couple of things. AJ is as well happening around the NFL. <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers' to, uh, toe. Him not telling us how he hurt it or did hurt it. And how big of a deal do you think it is? And your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers? I love Aaron. Okay. Hey, I, I love Aaron. Even though he's a quarterback, I love Aaron. Uh, that toe is serious. Uh, I don't know if it's turf toe or whatever the case, but that's a serious injury. Is that something you know about a quarterback if they have it? If you're rushing, obviously. Oh, absolutely. You can't bend. You can't walk. You have to walk flat-footed because that big toe does not bend. So that's a very serious injury that uh, a lot of people think is insignificant because it's. What if it toe. was a pinky toe though? Yeah, yeah, you're just soft now. You, oh, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. so it might be it might be what it is though. It yeah, might be if a, it's pinky. a pinky toe. He can get through that, you know. But if it's a if it's the big toe or the second metal tarsal, when which I broke my last year, my very last game playing, and they had to put a pin in my foot oh, and cut damn. my and cut my bunion off. No, so, <laughs> lost bunion. your bunion. I lost my bunion. Lost man. Bunion. I lost my bunion. That <laughs> <laughs> bunion and those sandals. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. What you said, your second metatarsal. So that is what the next toe. to your pinky. No, it's next to the big toe. Okay, so we're going one, two, three. Start with one with the big toe. We had a debate yesterday what toe Aaron was talking about. Yeah. So. What do you say? Well, that's what we still don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, it could be big toe, could be pinky yeah. toe. Yeah, we, one or the other. We're not one hundred percent sure, but Wall Street Journal said. Uh, that it was COVID. Time. COVID. Time. Yeah. He did yeah. get COVID nineteen. Oh, they said. Yeah. Uh -huh. But wow. even Aaron said it was a bone situation. Didn't. Gumpy's oh. guy say if it's a it, that that's more of like a tissue thing, right? And swelling, not a bone. Well, COVID does seem to be a fungus and a grow <laughs> type right. thing. Swole. But yeah. don't stop Wall Street Journal from thinking <laughs> that because he did drop little seeds of what it could be throughout the interview. Uh, it's structural damage, mm -hmm. basically. It's worse than turf toe. Oh, so this dude fractured his. He fractured his toe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now he won't tell us how it happened, which makes me wonder. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was definitely taking a piss. Yeah. Uh -huh. Definitely taking a piss and walking, and that's how that whole thing happened. Maybe he just didn't want to say it. 
Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Let's go. Um, <laughs> let's talk about MCDC up there in Detroit. Have you seen the way he operates? They might go completely defeated. He was crying a few weeks ago because he was so invested. Now, there's no way he maintains that amount of commitment to that team at this point, right? Uh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey. hey, shout out to my man Trey Flowers, man. That's all I will say. Mm -hmm. Trey Flowers. Yeah, just, yeah. Let's just, just. You think just, they stink up there? Got no chance. Stick, stick to the script, man. <laughs> just, just, just stick to it, man. You think they stink up there, huh? No chance. Why are some places better than others? They got the players, so I mean, I remember going through a two and fourteen season, and it was just a bunch of, you know. Not good shit, shit going on everywhere. Though. Yeah, just everything was just just suck, you know. So it's just a kind of it's their season right now. So just get through it, hit the reset button, and just move forward. I'm not in a position to comment because I don't know much about what's going on up there. Besides the bottom line, your your record said your record indicates you are what you indicate. Yep, indicates. How to, how to, okay, yeah, is it a record? Again. Edit. Bop, drop yeah. it. <laughs> Three, two, two and one. your record says What's well, three? <laughs> hey, three. you suck, you suck. So. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. Robert, you said you coached. Uh what was it like? I guess was it what you expected? You you I'm sure you knew like the time commitment, yeah, it's crazy, but I would imagine once you get in there and you're living it day in and day out, you're like, Wow, this is a different world. Like how was that? It is a commitment that is, is is so different than what you're used to as a player. You used to come in, just come in the building, do what you're supposed to do, and get out. Coaches, it's okay. You got meetings, practice. You got to deal with players, whatever issues they're dealing with. Afterwards, after the players leave, is meetings, watching film, and desk garden, and busy work, and. Desk guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, desk guard. It's like, what am I doing here? Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watch, I've watched film. I've done my report. Why am I still here? Why can't I go home? You don't have a, you can't, it's no set time to, to clock out. I heard a story about Bill Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> he had a, I heard that he had a, he had two, two, two of the same cars. So the player, the coaches can't leave until they see that car leave. <laughs> so he would park that one car. But have his other card that he's going. No, with so, no. I said I can't. I don't know if it's, it's it's confirmed. Somebody needs to confirm this. But it was like, wow. By the way, how deep into not doing jack shit while you're still at the building are you guys that you're telling stories about <laughs> Bill Belichick? <laughs> <laughs> like, you go get some coffee. Go to the weight room. Uh, go in the training room. Go mess with Aaron Burrell. You know these Love guys. That. Talk some shit. Come back to the office. Look around. Uh, leave again. <laughs> uh, watch film. Do your reports. Come hey, back and go back and mess with Aaron now. AJ, uh, by the way, the training room and the equipment staff are backbones of buildings that don't yeah. get enough credit as personalities and as hard workers. Uh, they are needed, and I hope Hard Knocks does showcase some of those characters mm -hmm. we have behind the scenes. You got to get T and Frog oh, on that show. T to. and Frog. You got to get those two on there. I agree. So. Frog's the best. Um, oh, we have AJ and I. Why is his name Frog? Uh, there's one. I guess there was one day. There was one day. <laughs> he has this incredible ability to do like a catcher stance. You know, like uh, like down squat like this. Mm -hmm. And he was doing snapping or something. And somebody screamed like from across the. Hey, that guy looks like a frog. And it was Frog just locked in. <laughs> just from there. I think that is how. If I've Recalling correct, he's a legend of yeah. a human. Yes, he is. He and T both, and then the entire training staff, that's the equipment staff, everyone training. It's a lot of great people. Um, <laughs> I, was, I forget what I was going to ask you about. It was a fucking good one, too, I thought. I thought you were going to give a really good answer. Uh, let's go to Connor. Connor, what's your question? Uh, ah, it was so good, I thought. <laughs> you think you would hate the hard knocks in the facility that the Colts got going on right now, or do you think that's something you'd be open to? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm old school. So Yeah. I don't think that would have fit what we did, <laughs> especially with Peyton in that building. No, sir. How about how about the conspiracies that uh, <clears throat> another team is potentially watching during training camp and shit? That was real. When I got to the NFL my first couple of years, there was mm -hmm. the thought that New England was either flying a hot air balloon <laughs> over yeah. practice or everything like that. Now they actually have <laughs> cameras in every single room. Right? It's wild. It's a very, very different thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you can give, get, get, gather some info or intel, hey, by all means. It's, I mean, it's out to the public, but... Uh, if you have 
microphones in the ceiling in the locker rooms over in, in you know in a visiting locker room then that's another thing you know oh, who's oh. Doing that? Yeah. man i don't know oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. i don't know <laughs> confirm nor deny aj you guys have any uh microphones in the guest locker room uh, or visitor locker room fuss off dude not that <laughs> not that i know i mean microphones are better than them putting cameras in your visiting locker room don't you think yeah well yeah. it depends on who you got in there obviously <laughs> but uh the thought of we'll go through all the teams that you you potentially so it wasn't the packers i don't think it wasn't mm -hmm. the steelers no. well no. i don't know who it is man uh, yeah, you don't Patriots. Know. Yeah. 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 no it no. just seemed like they knew stuff that nobody else knew man. Yeah, fascinating. Well, you talked to a guy that said something about Bill before the uh, hey, some Bill, games. Bill Belichick, Tom Brady was, and it would make sense if he had every locker room mic'd somehow. Tom Brady basically said that on Saturdays before games, Bill would come up to him and say like, "Hey, this is going to happen," and then boom, it would happen, and then just keep it moving. And then we talked to other people that were in that building, and he's like, "Oh, every game, basically, he's telling like, hey, this is going to happen, this is going to happen.' Is he the best football IQ of all time? That's what everybody would just have to think, I guess." The y'all who we who who, who we oh, were. Geez, oh, <laughs> they are who we thought they were. <laughs> they, this this man in the arena is pretty pretty cool. It is pretty cool to watch like how that whole operation <clears throat> kind of went down. What they're allowing us to see, I guess, is the yeah. thing. Go ahead, Dix. Robert, you talked about reaching out to Max Crosby and say, hey, let me get with you a little bit. Um, so DeMarcus Lords gets hurt with Cowboys, and Micah Parsons, who was a middle linebacker in college, gets moved outside. Now he's got eight sacks as a rookie. Like, What do you think about him? Is that a guy that you're like, hey, <laughs> let's get together? Yeah. He obviously has a special trait. Uh, if he can play two positions, and he got drafted at – he at one position and he's thriving at the other position they got them one so he's definitely a guy i would love to train as well similar to you so, right kind of it feels like the way ooh, he plays. I, I couldn't play linebacker for shit no <laughs> he's, he's on a whole nother level i'm talking about build athlete wise with what how he's playing it, it, now he's a lot smaller no. than robert really no he's like six four is he that tall he's like he's like six four 230 230 Jeez. 240 okay Damn. all right i mean bigger I'm, than i thought i'm six feet <laughs> <laughs> 63 245 is what zito just Jeez. said in the back all right well i robert, thought he was I did, smaller i did yeah, too no, he's i thought robert i thought you're six five 275 with two percent body fat that's how you look when you play no i got on the six feet 235 i got on a scale after robert a couple of times and i weighed more than him. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like all right i need to stop eating it Dang, that is something I need yeah. to stop. Yeah, slow. <laughs> <laughs> slow. Um, how about the reviewing? How do you feel about the reviewing of uh, calls? So right now, they, it feels like sporadically, they'll have a review with a Hawkeye system that they took allegedly from maybe the XFL or tennis or something, and they'll they'll go down in the ear of the ref and he'll say, after discussion, we're picking this up and we're moving on. It doesn't happen in every game. It feels like it only happens in some games. I think this is very good for everything going forward. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on it as an old school player? I'll, well, if they get it right, then I'm for it. But it's, it's it looks like there's a lot of experimental stuff going on this season. But in order to move the game a little faster, I, I, I kind of like it. But Me too. They just kind of just, just need to pick a lane and get in it and stay in it. What do you think about the refs as a whole? I hate refs. The whole, the whole, all of them, man. Uh, no. I don't like refs. Not at all. No, Especially I don't right. like them. None of them. Me neither, by the way. I mean, I, I, I understand nobody wants to be a ref, but golly, let's figure well, it out. My thing is make them full-time employees. Yeah. So therefore, if you mess up, like an an egregious fuck up, you can get fined too, because players can't players and coaches can't speak on some egregious stuff that happened that, that, that would alter the outcome of a game. But then the, and the refs just get off scot-free, send them a letter saying, okay, my bad on Monday, but no, we just lost the game because yeah. of this one call. You know, you, you play hard for 59 minutes and 58 seconds out and one call can just mess up the whole outcome of a game. And all they get is a don't do it anymore. Yeah, no, man. Find, find them too. Yeah, especially in this multi-billion, mm -hmm. billion, billion, yeah. billion dollar business that we Absolutely. have. They are a massive part of it. To think that they're part-time or not full-time is absurd. And then Dean Blandino, obviously the Fox Rules expert alongside Mike Pereira, and Terry McCauley uh, spoke to Peter King of Football Morning in America about exactly what you just actually said. Dean Blandino said mm -hmm. that it could be a good idea. Dean Blandino said a lot of people don't see it as a solution, but I think Jeez. it certainly would be. From a perception standpoint, a positive 
positive officials wouldn't have other jobs taking away from the NFL job exactly what they'd be doing all season. I am not sure, but people who spend more time on their craft are going to be better at it. He'd go on to say other things. Terry McCauley now of NBC, he would tell Peter King this. Uh, He'd say, I don't believe it would make officiating better in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so not in any way, shape, or or, or form, it will not get better. The only way it would possibly improve an official's life is there wouldn't be the stress added to your life that a full-time job adds. (laughs) So that would be your first sentence, sir, being corrected right here. Then let's add, I used to get home from a Sunday game, maybe 11 or 12 o'clock at night, and I'd be at my desk as a computer fucking scientist at 6 a.m. the next morning, there really wasn't much downtime. That really would be the only pro. A few years ago, the NFL had a program where some officials were full-time employees. 21, they, they stopped it or whatever, for whatever reason, he'd go on. Hey, Terry, that's exactly what we're fucking talking about. Maybe at 6 a.m., as opposed to being a computer scientist, you're looking back at the game and getting better as an official. That would make it better in some shape form or way yeah. terry mccauley but yeah. that is the problem you have some people terry mccauley's probably in a position of power and there's a lot of like-minded <sighs> people thinking like him it's like just because you're old school doesn't mean you can't adapt and become better that hey, is- Pat, but do the refs do you, do the current refs right now if you pull them do they want to be full-time employees i don't know and what's the payment i guess because some of them are lawyers right there like, yeah, yeah a lot of them are lawyers making probably some pretty good cash well, well don't do it well yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. there's sacrifices to being a goddamn nfl you're right. that's right ain't that right robert Absolutely. As a man, your woman, your children, and your money, those are three things that men do not play around with. And two of those are off the table. So if you mess up, you should start touching their pockets just like these guys are getting affected with a bad call. Yeah. Hey. Say what I said. And if they're full time, by the way, in the off season, they're not allowed. The, the quote was something like they weren't allowed to do anything until April 15th or something. It's like, take them to a camp. Like, can yeah. We, yeah. Can we not do a seminar of some sort at a hotel? A jack of all trades, master of none, or you can master this. And just and be a professional at it, and it's not and and the less and it's less likely you're gonna mess up these calls. Hey, man, could you imagine like when Ed Hockey League goes to negotiate he what he's making versus some other ref, and there's like some young upstart oh. ref like, oh, this not fucking up a lot of stuff here, <laughs> not a lot of all oh, this. He's gonna set he's gonna set a new record for referee contracts. I mean, that would be why not? The money's there. And there's only gonna be more with gambling. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of money in the sports gambling world. Yeah. It's only going to be more scrutiny because of that, too. With a the lot. Rest. There's a lot of money. So much money. Cartoon money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious money. Yeah, laughing mm-hmm. a lot of money. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So much money that people might even say it aloud while potentially negotiating about said money. Yeah. Maybe. Like, hey, this is... This is cartoon money, actually. A lot of money. Hey, what if they ref the USFL in the spring, too? They do the NFL job, and then in the spring, they're getting more reps doing the, the spring leagues that yeah. pop up. Here we go. And then the NFL would have to be associated with USFL, which the NFL probably doesn't want to be because then they were saying yeah. it's a feeder. They could test new rules, though, with the USFL. I think they said they already planned on doing that, right? And some of like the technology that they don't yeah. want to use in the NFL yet, they're going to use it in the USFL broadcast. So Fox is saying that about the broadcast coverage or the refereeing and everything? Uh, I believe both. So I, I would assume that the NFL will watch them do it mm-hmm. and then take their idea. I don't know if they're going to like say, hey, try this out. You know, make, I don't it, know. Think, make it look like it's their idea, and then they'll implement it. Yeah, smart. They'll tweak it a little bit. Okay, look what we came up with, and it's going to be what the USL, USFL did that was successful probably three months before. All right, we're, uh, we're wrapping up uh, Hour 3 here with Robert Matheson's studio. Let's answer some phone calls here before uh, beautiful Thanksgiving tomorrow. Hey, here we yeah. go. Yeah. Hey, I'd like to give some early thanks. Okay. okay. To Robert for hanging out with us in the studio. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Robert. Robert. Hey, Robert. <laughs> Appreciate you. Hey, good luck. Yeah, don't, call him, don't call him Bob the second he leaves, though. <laughs> who? I know how you, you get. That who would be you? You call me Bob. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. It was a microphone throw. You yeah. see, this microphone's been around a long time. A lot of uh, green chip tea. blocks. Green tea. Yeah, cuts yep. out. Well, by Robert. <laughs> a, let's, go to, uh, let's go to Dallas. Let's go to Eric in <clears throat> Dallas on the 5 RNG phone line. Go to 5 RNG.com. Use promo code MACFEE to receive 10% off your order. What's going on, Eric in the Big D? <laughs> Pat, AJ, boys, what's going on? Keep them Nothing, man. Keep them Pat, AJ, boys, all right. I got a uh, hot take for Thanksgiving. <sighs> all right, let's I'm going to paint you a little picture. I'm going to paint you a little picture. You get your plate, all the food's out, right? Grab your turkey, grab your mashed potatoes, grab Hi. your stuffing. What? Grab your base. And at the very end, slap some ketchup on that turkey. Yes, all right. That's not a hot take. That's smart. You put ketchup on everything. That's 
That's blasphemous. No. Who the fuck's oh, putting oh. ketchup on her Thanksgiving turkey? On the dry ass? No. What? Yeah. No, no, no. Get yourself yeah. a goddamn butterball, moist turkey. No, no, no. no. That's what the gravy is. I only eat the drumsticks. I only eat drumsticks anyway, so I would never ever think about think dipping the Are you putting gravy. ketchup on your drumsticks? Never in a yeah, million years. Exactly. Okay. This ain't a fucking Tuesday night no, in the you know talking? middle of January. This is Thanksgiving. No, I'm talking about that very bland, dry yeah. turkey by people who try to eat it. Oh. Use ketchup every other day. Or of the you year. get a goddamn butterball and make sure it's nice and moist. <laughs> Who's cooking your turkey? That's so you gotta dry. spatchcock that yes, thing, make do. it moist. No, right. no disrespect to anybody yeah. that's ever made me a turkey. <laughs> no disrespect. No disrespect. No disrespect. I, I, dry. I, I'm a drumstick. <laughs> I'm a drumstick guy. It was not your fault. It was my my palate is too. What do you? Uh, what do we? What's your favorite side on Thanksgiving, Robert? Stuffing. Oh. Nah. No. Yeah. Mm. Mashed, mashed potatoes, whatever. <laughs> mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. No, I just, just, I just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Happy, oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, let's go to uh, Sean in Wisconsin. Sean, what's going on? That's awesome. What's going on, Pat? AJ. All right, just hanging, man. How are you? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Man. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, man. Hey, I mean, I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller, man. I just wanted to give a shout-out to you, shout-out to the boys, shout-out to Ty Schmidt. Happy Thanksgiving. Shout-out. Shout-out. Shout-out, shout Robert. Shout-out. Shout-out, shout out AJ. Shout out. He did, AJ. Oh, shout okay. Out. <laughs> wow. Shout-out. Shout-out. Oh, that was it. All right, see you, man. Thanks. All right, thanks, thanks for the happy call, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Grateful. <laughs> All right, that was amazing. All right, everybody, uh, grab your drinks. Let's go ahead and raise it here as we wrap up this radio show here on Sirius XM. Um, there's a man in our presence that is about to have a week where he will celebrate two things that are rather sweet. sweet. Ring Nick of Honor Bars. and the Hall of Fame. And his name Bars. is in Bob, because Bob Mathis would be lame. Bars. When you think of a strip sack or a sack fumble, you remember one word. And it's the cue dog where barking can be heard. <laughs> it's 98 coming off the edge and spearing people in the head. Nah, you didn't do that. You were actually a pretty fair player. You didn't hurt anybody at all. Yeah, Cheers to you, it. dude. Happy Thanksgiving. Congrats on all the success. Thank you for stopping by. To everybody listening, I hope you have an incredible Thanksgiving. Cheers, cheers. Uh, uh, AJ Hawk's got a double red cup over there. Whoa. He's very, maybe on some lean. Make sure you look out for cuz there. But cheers to you, Robert. Cheers to everybody. Let's have a hell of a day. Huh? Hey! Hey! Appreciate you guys. Hey, no problem, man. We're, we got uh, Chuck Pagano joining us in about 10 minutes. We'll talk to him. I can't wait to Chill. chat with him. He's the best. He got some good stuff. Hey, let's have a weekend, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. What you drinking? Uh, me? No, I'll be so high, you guys won't even. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 worry, huh? be, uh, don't worry about that. Oh, yeah, I'll bring my own. I'll bring my own. Right. <laughs> no, maybe I'll have to, I guess. I'll have to. Probably have a little, at least a little tequila. Right. Right. You don't have to do nothing. Nah, but the but good you old have, you days. have to come. That's what you do. Come, come by. You got it. And we'll yeah. be back on Friday. See you, serious.